Our next guest tonight is a lawyer turned preacher, preacher turned politician. Still all of that in the same mix. He was called to bar in 1981, but seven years later he became a pastor. He's seen as someone who speaks truth to power, especially from the pulpit with his characteristic fiery sermons. He ventured into politics and became now President Buhari's running mate in the 2011 presidential elections on the platform of the Congress for Progressive Change. He was a convener of the Save Nigeria group, a coalition of pro-democracy groups, and today is a serving overseer of the Citadel Global Community Church Nigeria, and also presidential aspirant in the APC, Pastor Tunde Bakari, joins us virtually tonight on Politics Today. Well, good evening, Pastor Bakari, and thank you for joining us on the program. Lots of Nigerians witnessed your official declaration earlier today, and you spoke about the four pillars which you wish to build upon to transform the nation. But we'll get to that in a moment, because before that, there are lots of surprises from, you know, your emergence. So let's maybe try to peel the layers. And first shock for a lot of people is the fact that you are now in the APC. I mean, when did you join the APC? Very interesting question, Cardi. Good evening to you and to all viewers. Um, if I'm asked why did I join the APC, I will have to go back to how APC was formed. Uh, by the grace of God, after the CPC uh, party that I, I was part of, and we took part in the election of 2011, thereafter, we thought the best way to take power in Nigeria legitimately is to form uh, a merger, to have a merger with other parties. And we began this process about 2012, after we had reconfigured the CPC, and by the grace of God, it was my privilege to move the motion for the merger on February 6, 2013, at the Eagle Square uh, in, here in the Federal Capital Territory. So if anyone is asking why, CPC, why APC, I was part of those who brought APC. I was nurture it and cause it to grow and become really a party to it. Well, the question specifically is when did you join the APC? Because, uh, yes, we understand you moved the motion for the merger and all of that, but I recall an interview you granted in 2020. Uh, you said you didn't join the APC at that time because you were from the legacy party that produced the current uh, president. And you even went on to say that you've not openly joined a political party anywhere and that you've not talked about the political party you're going to use. So that's a 2020. When did you become a member of the APC, a card-carrying member? You have just said the truth. I said those words, and I don't take back my words. And you recall that from, the, from Mr. President himself, as well as all members of the party, we all, uh, the old registry was done away with, and a new registry was opened, that people were free to join, and we are all newcomers in the party. But to answer you directly, I joined the party on the 21st of February, 2021. What word, uh, where exactly did you register? Ikeja. Right, so uh, now that that has been gotten out of the way, because a lot of people have been wondering, how did this happen? Well, you've provided some insight, but let's talk about you know, the next phase, which is you know, the purchase of the nomination forms, the expression of interest forms. You're someone who has spoken about, you know, the high cost of governance, how we need to have a lean and mean kind of governance structure. And, you know, purchasing a form for 100 million Naira. I wonder for you, don't you think that negates your view of having, you know, low cost of governance, not having, you know, a, a big or too big governance structure? Well, that has literally nothing to do with government structure. It has to do with process. Uh, by the grace of God, when we get to the place where we can make a difference, uh, you can still be rest assured that the government will be lean and mean, and it's going to be nimble, and we're going to ensure that it had maximum impact. But talking about the cost, 
There's a price to pay for everything. I was not uh, part of the decision-making process, but if I'm going to apply for anything and there's risk, this is the way to go about it. The price had to be paid. It's like going to a school or going to a university. You pay fees. Now, do I consider that fee or that cost very uh, uh, cheap? Not at all, not in the least. Just as everything in life that uh, is highly valued comes with a price. That was a price the party fixed, and those who want to join will have to go uh, and pay the same price. And by the grace of God, we pay without having to borrow or to beg. And God Almighty, who had provided, is still providing and continue to provide. And it's not money thrown away. It's part of the investment in a party that needs resources to actually be a formidable party. Yes, very high price. Right. That time we come. I remember sharing with some people that the last time uh, in 2014, 2015, when the president uh, contested the first time before he won, it was about 30 million. Uh, at this time, this time around, PDP fixed 40 million. I was expecting that would not be more than 50 million, but when it doubled the price, whatever is worth it, because this is time to step in and begin to make a difference, we had to comply by paying that price. Not to pay the price. Right. Part not of to you. pay it. Yes. Yes, uh, because there, there are a lot of people who were thinking that this was, you know, another opportunity for you to make a point. So you're known as someone who has spoken truth to power, saying, well, this is too much. In the context of the Nigeria we're in today, unemployment figures, the poverty figures, the inflation rates, the cost of living. So amidst all of the, you know, the, the lack, it will seem as though you're just pushing it in people's face that, yes, we can afford, you know, these funds. So a lot of people thought you were going to make a point and say, well, this is too far. Do you think you disappointed those people? Well, I'm not disappointing them because they didn't even know I made such a point. I did ever before uh, either transferring funds to purchase the form, I made moves behind the scenes, spoke to those in authority that not only myself, even some of the governors spoke highly and said this is too high and it will have a backlash from society. We did, but once they made the decision this is the way to go, not to pay is to also give room to those who say, well, it's all braggadocio. And there was a senator, former senator of Cardinal State, who said, Bakari has gone quiet since 100 million is mentioned because he could not afford it. I don't trade insults with people. I just did what I needed to do, spoke against it, but had to comply right. until you can make a difference. Look at the price Christ paid. He left the whole of heaven and the glory of heaven to come to the earth to pay a huge price in order to save mankind, to birth a new nation, to serve in a way that will raise standards and at the same time make life more comfortable for others, you have to go through pain. So are you I saying that fucking pain? Are you saying when you com compare that to the you know price Christ paid, are you saying that you paid the hundred million from your own pocket, same as Christ, you know, gave his life, his own life? Money is the easiest thing to trace. Yes, by the grace of God, we paid. Don't forget, there's so many people who are even willing to pay on our behalf, and so many people who give towards it and are given towards it, but whatever was transferred to the party account came from our account. Right. Well, uh, just quickly, uh, before we get into your plans, you, you were conspicuously missing uh, from that uh, Southwest presidential aspirants meeting in Lagos uh, over the weekend. Uh, why? Were you invited or weren't you? I was invited, uh, I think, a day or two before the event, but I gave a tangible excuse why I could not be there. Uh, previously, I've been scheduled to meet with the uh, President and Commander-in-Chief on that exam, exact day, 6th of May, at 9 p.m. The meeting in Lagos was 6 p.m. 
It was on Tumbali Adebayo who contacted me on behalf of the group that this meeting had been fixed and you are cordially invited. And I sent a message to him, which he delivered there, that it is not possible for me to be in two places. And I spoke with those who convened the meeting and they told me the, the, my uh, inability to be there, the excuse was tendered and was acceptable to them. Right. So let's now get into your is an ambition or your mission now. You keep using that term that you are the 16th. The President Buhari is 15th, but you are 15th. And you've said that several times. And I'd like you to shed more light on that. Is that a prophecy? Is that a vision? Is it something that is fail-proof? Well, nothing in life except God Almighty and his work is fail-proof. Only God can make things happen can speak with final authority and nothing changes that. The 16th is being a childhood dream that I saw. And I will tell you quickly, because I saw Ruben Abati uh, trying to be sarcastic about that. I wrote this book, I wrote this vision that I saw, this dream that I had, April 10, 1967, in a book that I published since 2018, and everyone who cared to know and heard about this. In my father's house are 16 steps in his story building that he built in 1922. And one night in a dream, I climbed these 16 steps, and instead of a window before me turned to a door, I walked through this door and I saw a massive rock. On the rock were two people, one of the two of the greatest, and some of the greatest people in Nigeria, I mean, General Gawan, Yakub Gawan and Chibaba Femi Awolo, one on the right, one on the left. And I found myself sitting in the middle seat between them and were looking at the trajectory of Nigeria, its future greatness and everything. At the age of almost 13, I was 12 plus, I didn't fully understand the dream until my mother explained certain things to me. And as I proceeded and as I continued with God, I discovered that Genesis 16, Genesis, the 16th chapter, is a book about reconciliation of conflicts within family and nations and regions. Right. It has 16 verses. And also, the 16th book of the Bible is a book of Nehemiah. When I say the 16th, the 16th text made me conclude that by the time we have the 16th head of state, or, or president as it's called now, I have a destiny role to play. My destiny is intertwined with that of Nigeria. That was where I came from, and I've been using the system consistently. And one of the reasons I agreed to run with Mr. President when he was a candidate in 2011 is because I knew he's number 15. If you start counting from Tafar Baliwa up to today, he's the 15th president. And by God's grace, I will play a significant role in the 16th presidency. So in other words, uh, Pastor Bakari, if you say you play a significant role, it doesn't necessarily have to be the president. It could be what, vice president or another prominent role. Is that what you mean? Is it president or nothing for you? You can't say, if you're a nation builder, you can't say, oh, presidency or nothing. This is not an ambition. It's an ambition, then you can do everything to make it happen. If it is vision, it's God that makes it happen. And to answer you directly, by the grace of God, I intend to be the 16th president of Nigeria. All right. So, I mean, you, you forgive a lot of people if they don't exactly uh, maybe buy that vision. I mean, it's democracy. People have choices to make. And I'd like you to address this. Yes, you have that vision. You've, you've gone even divine in, in, in trying to explain that. But aside that, there will always be the question of what kind of leadership, you know, uh, abilities do you bring on board? And if you could deal with that in, in about a minute, what stands you out amongst 200 million Nigerians to be the one who will take Nigeria to that promised land, as it were? What stands you out? So many things. By the grace of God, we can look at our trajectory, what we have done, either to we have what we have gone through, and where we are. And anyone asking the question, uh, why do I think I have what it takes to be a leader or to the leadership quality I have, should begin to think of what President Muhammad Buhari of the same 200 million people chose me to be his running mate. Uh, I remember him telling me three things. 
He said, we have checked you out, you have integrity, you have character, you have competence, and I know that if you team up with me, we will we'll make Nigeria uh, a better place to live in. Um, I do not want to sing my own praises, but you can just look around you and see what God has enabled me to do. When this nation was in the throes of crisis in 2010, I convened the civil civil Nigeria group, led it with integrity, led it with competence, and by the grace of God, we were able to secure what is now called uh, doctrinal necessity. Um, led by the grace of God imperfectly within the church organization for 23 years. And you could criticize what I've said, what I've told. God has not allowed any scandal to break around me for any, any cause of financial impropriety and other things. By the grace of God, the leadership skill we acquired from the likes of Chief Ganifai, me, who mentored us, from the likes of Roti <laughs> Mule, uh, 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 and as a young student, alongside with my friend Bega Daniel, who have been mentored by Chief Obafemi Olo, leadership or character is what comes into a clear, crystal clear uh, when you are under pressure. We have, when others ran back from the battle, we stood strong, we pushed the nation forward, and we have shown it in our business life, in our ministry life, in every way by raising other leaders. A few days ago, I took my bow. The ministry is still going on because success without succession is failure. We have raised leaders across the nation and we continue to do it. So does that mean that you're stepping aside from ministry to, to, you know, to follow through with this ambition or the mission, which you have called it? <laughs> Whatever you call it, Kyle, the truth is I cannot be president of Nigeria and be preaching every Sunday. No. Others will have to continue. I pastor that church for three years. I took a bow. But I want you to know that I'm not a professional politician, that in politics is not going to work. I have no other things to do. There will be so many other things to do, but I had to take a bow to let others continue. If you read, read your Bible well, and I know how they may be a Christian, every time David was in the palace of Saul, he had opportunity to go back to feed the flock. I was still remaining Christian. I was still worshiping church. And I was still be my neighbor's, my neighbor's keeper, my brother's keeper. Right. And so I'm not bringing religion into this matter. And as a matter of fact, I'm not religious at all. As far as I'm concerned, my faith is relationship with God because the word religion is from religion, which means return to bondage. Well, There's Pastor, no bondage Pastor there. Bakery. There's so many issues to raise. You forgive me for trying to rush this. I mean, this is a conversation the Nigerians have looked forward to. And you, you talked about scandals earlier on, saying that, well, you've been largely exempted from scandals. And late last year, uh, that story made the rounds about your relationship or with a certain bank and how things may have even gone awry. I, I wonder, do you suspect that that was targeted to taint your image? And uh, what's your position on that? Well, the truth of the matter is those who propagated that story also pulled the story down. The bank came to speak that, listen, Kande, is it a crime to take a loan? Two months before they wrote this news, in front page of this day, I analyzed or, or detailedly gave evidence of how we financed the project that is standing there. Over 12 billion uh, worth a project that is standing there called the Citadel. We envisioned it, we, we, it was conceived by us, and it was bought by us. We took loan from five banks, in addition to our resources and what the people of God gathered together, who we were able to build. We took loan from five banks, as of today, three banks have been paid off. The fourth bank, we have resumed paying. The fifth, we have restructured. And the loan was secure. The bank that testified, do I need to sweat over that? By the grace of God, there will be no amount, no penny outstanding before we do the final dedication of that building. We didn't hide anything. So those who are carrying that all around are saying that while we are in scandal, if the bank said so, let the bank come clean. The bank stated we are in good relationship with them. The loan was properly secured. 
and we are meeting our obligations. Right. Let's do a mock test of sorts, uh, Pastor Bakari, as we wind down. Lots of questions to raise. I'm spoiled for choice. But I I'm going to be presenting some scenarios which Nigeria is currently facing. Now. I'd like you to speak to them, the solutions you have in mind. And I'll begin with the agitations that we have uh, across regions. I know during your, uh, your declaration today, you talked about the Presidential Commission for National Reconciliation, Reintegration and Rebirth. And you said that after two years, uh, they will reconcile the various groups. Uh, and I wonder, are you foreclosing, for example, a referendum, which some have called for, or some other you know, agitation for a self-governing state? Are you foreclosing on all of that? There's no foreclosure on any individual group right, group's right. If you recall, I mean, well, you may not know this, I, as far back as some two or three years ago, I was in Glasgow attending a conference on referendum to see how this is done. Not only that, I took part in the 2014 National Conference to see how Nigerians can come together. We are better together, the largest economy in Africa. Our population alone is a blessing, not a minus for us. I'm, I'm for a nation that is built on equity, fairness, justice, right. and fair play. So I cannot, those who are agitating and wanting to go is because they feel marginalized. And we say we are going to set up okay. a Nigerian uh, a charter on national reconciliation, I beg your pardon, pardon a, a commission, national reconciliation, retribution, and the rebirth of our nation, mm. where men who are bridge builders who preside and we sit on the table of brotherhood. Right discuss our differences and find a way forward. Okay, I, we have a minute. Pardon me, we, we have a minute to close. I do hope we'll continue this conversation, but I'd like you to end on this note. The four pillars, the four Ps, that's peace, progress, prosperity, and possibilities. Can you speak to them in a minute? Without peace, there cannot be increase. Learning from even God's words as to the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. If we don't have peace, if there's bomb scare here, train banditry there, we cannot forge ahead. We must do everything to ensure there's peace and order in our country. And it starts from the foundation of rule of law. When peace comes, you then can sleep well, you can wake up well, you can go do your work. Definitely, when we have peace, we definitely have progress. But we are not just using this as phrases and terminology, uh, peace, progress, prosperity, and possibilities. If you listen to me for almost an hour today, I specified what each one will carry. I spoke about National Geoeconomic Development Plan, our new GDP, that is just more than the regular gross domestic product. I envision that our geopolitical zones will become like six different, uh, imagine Dubai city, six different geoeconomic uh, zone that is thriving on the resources within that zone so that industries and, and, and manufacturing outfits can be built around there, even up to our educational system that we are going to learn, we are going to have syllabuses and things in our universities built in such places that the education there will be to train our people to ensure that that particular zone right. is thriving. We have dependent on the center for too long a time. Well, clearly, we need to go back and do what will make this nation great again. Well, Pastor so Bakari, clearly this progress. conversation is far from over. And I do wish that we can pick this up some other time. Always quite engaging to speak with you on issues uh, of national development. But we'd like to thank you at least uh, for the little time we've spent with you on the program uh, this evening. We've been speaking with Pastor Tunde Bakare, who has his eyes set on being the 16th leader of Nigeria. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you, Cardi. The possibilities are enormous. And we will do our best to ensure that Nigeria is great again.